Well, yeah, that's exactly the gnome is like the immovable yeah. object. <laughs> they are going to do what they're going to do, mm -hmm. no matter who's trying to tell them to do otherwise. Now, um, all that being said, like I think that probably uh, maybe four years ago I wouldn't mm. have said this, but I think that in the grand scheme of things, Ubuntu choosing GNOME was a good idea, or at least it was good mm -hmm. for GNOME, because you can tell, you can see the influence that Canonical and their developers have had on upstream vanilla GNOME. Like, mm -hmm. there's way, I mean, I, I, I feel dirty saying this, but there's way more customization in vanilla GNOME now mm -hmm. than there was two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, way more. Like, two and a half years ago, two and a half years ago, three years ago, whatever, they weren't adding any features. They were pulling things out. So they were, you know, they pull out icons on the desktop. They pull out the, the tray icons at the top. Like, one thing after another. I mean, it was like you couldn't go a few months without hearing something that the GNOME guys were pulling out of their desktop. Because it was so slow. Like, it was astonishingly slow because they had these horrible animations that hey. took, like... Hey, don't hate on the horrible animations. They... Well, oh, okay. They were cool if you wanted to wait five seconds for your app drawer to open. It was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. It, 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 it was, I mean, they've, uh, it's way better now, right? Mm. The, the thing is, like, they were in this position where it looked like Gnome was dying. Like, a lot of people chose, a lot of di distros chose Gnome, but mm. the, they had so many issues that they were trying to desperately, it was like they, were, they, were, they had the bucket pulling out water of their boat that was sinking. You mm -hmm. know, and it, and all those were features that they had to throw out because it was so bloated. Like Nautilus was, not, like Nautilus was the thing. Like mm -hmm. the whole Gnome shell was based on and tied into Nautilus and stuff, and that caused all sorts of problems. And you can tell now, and, and I hate to give Canonical all, all the credit because I, I, I'm sure that it was a very much of a, a team effort, right? Mm -hmm. But it feels like they that Canonical has had a lot of influence at least more influence than I would have thought that they would have had on the GNOME developers. Mm -hmm. And that now things are a lot faster. You know, they have their, you know, they have accent colors and they have a dark mode and they finally fixed those horrible brown icons that they had forever that nobody in their right mind would ever like. You know, they one thing after another. I mean, it, oh, I it feels... You, <laughs> all right, you want to... Friendship over. It's just horrible. <laughs> you know? I mean, seriously, no, I, what is I, wrong look, with you? I've gone back and used, like, the first version, like, literally the first version of Ubuntu, and, you know, there's something charming about the disgusting brown icons. They're not good, but there's something <laughs> charming about them. If you knew nothing else, then they would be good. Sure. Like if you've never seen, if you've ne if you'd never seen an icon before, then and it had nothing to compare it to. It, yeah, and maybe enough. maybe for this, maybe for nostalgia, it'd be fine. But as a default icon set nowadays, oh, no, the, yeah. the, the, the blue ones are way better now, mm -hmm. and they've because of the live add away to stuff, they can do uh, accent colors and stuff like that. It's, it's way better. Um, and I I think that at least some of that has to be attributed to the fact that they're bigot. Like obviously, Fedora doesn't make anything because that's them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's basically you know very much a related project. But Canonical is this outside entity that said, you know, we're going to use your desktop environment, but we, it, as it is, it's basically mm -hmm. unusable. You know, we we have to <laughs> we have to do so much in order to actually make this thing work, which mm -hmm. begs the question. Why? I mean, at the time, like now it makes sense. Like mm -hmm. right now it's fine. And they've done all, all the work is done, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, they've done all this work. But if they knew at the time that it was unusable, mm -hmm. which it was because they had to do all this stuff, why didn't they choose KDE? Like KDE is the most customizable piece of crap you've ever seen in your life, right? It, it's buggy as hell um, and overly complicated so i'm assuming that the reason the answer to my question is because it would confuse the crap out of new users um i, I can well, just imagine i i think that what are they, they what they wanted to do is continue that unity experience and yes you, you could probably turn kde into like a unity like experience but the difference between gnome and unity is a lot smaller than the difference between kde and unity Plus, with the support thing, like, if you used KDE and mm. you made it into Unity, mm -hmm. and then 
uh, your enterprise person decided to change a setting in some place randomly mm -hmm. in the KD settings panel, which is like, you, you, I mean, it's the KD settings panel. <laughs> so, you know, you would have, I mean, it's not the desktop consumers that you'd have to worry about. The the enterprise, if they if mm -hmm. they messed that up, mm -hmm. you'd have to support that. And so even the KDE guys can't support KDE all that well. <laughs> so the the support, I mean, so. It, I, I always ask myself, like, why didn't they choose KD? Because it's the most customizable thing. It would have been way easier. They wouldn't mm -hmm. have had to put all this effort into making it look like Unity and uh, choose accent colors and stuff like that. But it really does answer itself. It's like KDE is too KDE. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that's the reason why. It, but I don't know. Uh, there have been moments since I started my YouTube channel where mm -hmm. I have... a been very vocal in my hatred of gnome like really i mean there have been some very harsh words said towards gnome and it has nothing to do i mean a lot of people don't like gnome because of their political stance i don't mm -hmm. give a rat's ass about any of that stuff right just the software stuff i've come out and said that i can't stand gnome i don't understand why anyone uses it um and over the last year or so i mean some of it has been i've just used it more often mm -hmm. but and it's never going to be my favorite. Like, I'm not running it right now. Uh, and I wouldn't. Although, that's not actually true. The computer behind me has GNOME on it. It's just the, <laughs> it's the only thing. It's just because I... I, I don't know. I haven't gotten around to change it. But eventually... Yeah. Because um, it, it's default, right? It's yeah. the one you download. Yeah. Uh, so, But my view on GNOME has definitely changed mm -hmm. over the last year. And... and I, I some of it is just because there's more customization stuff now, but more of it's just because it's it really has become the default desktop environment for Linux, which is I mean sad, I guess. I don't know. Well whether we're talking, to react to it. Whether we're talking Ubuntu with I don't know if you can really call what Ubuntu is running GNOME. It's sort of their own desktop environment at this point. Same with like Pop OS. Like mm -hmm. they're technically GNOME, but there's so much done to it that it's hard to call it that. But let's just say it is GNOME. Then you've got Fedora. And it's just like all of these distros, which are generally considered the, the, the mainstream Linux distros, all running GNOME. There are certainly mm -hmm. distros out there running KDE and like really popular distros. But when we're talking the main distros and what people from the outside see as Linux... I think you're absolutely right that Gnome is sort of seen as the Linux desktop. Whether that's a good thing or not sort of depends on how you feel about Gnome. I'm I'm sort of I don't really care. Like that's the thing. Like Gnome, I don't hate it, I don't love it. I'll use it if it's there. And I sometimes pick it if I stream just to piss people off because they get very annoyed uh, that Gnome <laughs> exists. But I'm still doing that the next time I stream. <laughs> I'm stealing that. <laughs> if, if I was going to use a desktop environment, I probably would use KDE, just because I like my focus is on it, my focus is on customization. I like to mess around with stuff, and yeah. GNOME it has a plugin framework technically, but you know there'll be updates that come out that break features that people oh. have demanded for years, like a um global uh. Uh, what's the thing? Global global context menus. menu. Yeah, global menu. Yeah. That thing that macOS has. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the thing is, like, dash to dock and dash to panel are like the two main extensions, right? Those mm -hmm. are the things that everyone downloads. Like, if you if you're going to use extensions, those are the two extensions you're probably going to one, one of the two you're going to download. And those things are always broken. Like, every like, they're broken. Well, one of them is broken right now. Won't work. 